James Harden is one of the greatest scorers the game of basketball has ever seen. His smooth jump shot paired with his elite handles made him unguardable in isolation. But coming into the NBA, there were concerns about his athleticism and even his ability to shoot off the dribble. So how did James Harden develop these skills to eventually become the MVP of the league and arguably the greatest iso ball scorer we have ever seen? When James Harden first came into the NBA, he played almost nothing like we see him play today. While playing for the Thunder, his role was to come off the bench providing a spark for the offense while playing within the system. Today we recognize him operating with the ball in his hands all the time in an iso or pick and roll scenario, but that was not the case back then. It was incredibly common to see him spotting up on the perimeter, waiting to get a kick out catch and shoot three off the drive of one of his teammates. Watching as his teammate Eric Maynard drives down the lane drawing the defense towards him, and then sliding up into the wing to get in sight for an open catch and shoot three. He was playing off ball a lot, so much so that in his rookie season, 92.5% of all his threes were assisted on. It was rare to see him creating off the dribble for himself, and instead running off the screen so he can run out to the corner to get open for a catch and shoot jumper. Running baseline then coming off this pin down to curl into a mid range jump shot and even watch this play where he runs off a double back screen to cut to the rim and then when he doesn't get open he turns to run off a pin down to the opposite wing to run into this catch and shoot three. When he would create, it was usually in a situation like this, where he's out on the wing, gets the pass thrown to him, and now he can rip by his defender and attack downhill to the rim. And when he did use a ball screen, he was probably getting a pass on the wing, where the big would then come up to set a screen, and he would simply come right off of it, attacking downhill, not using any extra dribbles. And this checks out, because in his rookie season, almost 60% of all his shots were assisted on, which was the highest of his entire career, meaning he only had to create for himself less than half of the time. What was surprising to see was his defense, because he was actually fairly active off ball, jumping passing lanes to take them coast to coast for a dunk, even staying in front of his man to poke the ball loose on defense, and then beating everyone down the court sprinting to the opposite end for a dunk which we almost never see today. But Harden quickly developed a more dynamic role in the Thunder's offense, becoming their third leading scorer in the 2013 season and winning sixth man of the year because of it. Being the third wing to KD and Westbrook led to him having the best three point shooting year of his career and the best year finishing at the rim. He became a shooting threat along the perimeter as when someone helped too far off on Westbrook or KD, he would be right there to get the kickout pass for an open shot. While the vast majority of his threes were assisted on, there was about a 50-50 split with his overall shot attempts, as he could pass it to his teammate and then cut right by his defender to get the pass for a high flying dunk, but he was beginning to create for himself off the dribble, starting at half court and then taking it himself to attack downhill, drive through traffic and finish over the defense, bringing up the ball himself, hitting the defender with a quick crossover, then attacking down the lane drawing the foul for the and one even attacking off of a screen, hitting a Euro step around the defender to rise up for this high flying dunk. This success he was having combined with some problems he was having with the Thunder led to him requesting a trade where he would land in Houston, no longer having to settle as the third option and having the opportunity to lead a team himself which instantly changed his style of play, as in his first season with Houston, the percentage of his field goals that were unassisted on rose 18%, and the percentage of his threes that were unassisted on rose from 14% to 52%. He was instantly taking over, having the ball in his hands all the time. At first, he was fairly simple with this, getting a flat ball screen that he can attack off of, and getting to the pull-up mid-range jumper, and even splaying the big man as he comes off a high ball screen, driving through traffic to get downhill to the basket. But as he proved to be a more dynamic scorer, he began to do more and more with the basketball, creating for himself as he hits his defender with a double crossover, and then pulls up from three. Playing with slow to fast size of dribbles, he could quickly explode out of to accelerate past his defender to attack downhill to the rim. And he even began implementing some of these size up step back threes into his game as well. At the time, these ISO situations were fairly quick. He might use one to two dribbles to then step back from three when the defender played too far back, 
and he was fairly quick using an in and out to attack left stop on a dime when the defender tries to cut him off then re-attack right to blow by for a layup in fact watch how quickly he accelerates to split the screen then drive down the lane for a dunk he was playing off ball a little bit, especially to get open beyond the arc, as he had an almost 50-50 split on his shots assisted on versus unassisted on from three in his first four years in Houston. These situations would often be like this, where he starts in the corner, runs up for a handoff, and when the defender goes under the screen, he pulls up to shoot the three. But in the 2016-2017 season, James Harden was named the starting point guard for the Rockets, which would have a huge impact on his play. Now as the primary ball handler, he had the ball in his hands a lot, bringing up the ball every possession and conducting the offense himself. This led to him creating for himself a ton off the dribble, as now over 80% of all his shot attempts were unassisted on. Now that he was in control, he could bring up the ball and when the defense sagged back, pull up for three. Sizing up his man with a quick in and out crossover, and then pulling up from three from beyond the arc. But where he really did his damage was in the pick and roll. Now playing the point guard role meant James Harden would get way more pick and roll opportunities, so much so that he had a pick and roll frequency of 40% which was the highest of his entire career. He used these screens to his advantage as now when his man got stuck, he could come off, attack the big with a quick crossover to get right down the lane for a layup as a lot of these bigs were slower, so all he needed to do was come off of a screen, get the switch, make one quick move, and he could beat the big off the dribble to get to the rim. Even if his man got over the first screen, he might just call for the rescreen, come off the other direction, and now with his man trailing, he can slowly work his way to get to the floater. And if the defense dared to go under, he would just stop to pull up for three. But he wasn't just creating for himself, he was creating for others too. These pick and rolls allowed him to really set up his teammates, using these screens to force the defending big to stay with him for just a second too long, which opened up his roll man for the lob. He was so incredibly difficult to guard in these screen and rolls, because even when he looked like he just created a wide open shot for himself, he was still looking for open teammates, shot faking to draw the defense towards him to open up this pass to his rolling big man even running off double screens, where now when he comes off of it, the defense is so out of position that the defender has to decide if he's going to give up a layup to Harden or a shot to the rolling big, and ultimately he ends up staying in no man's land where Harden can drive downhill and then throw the lob over him. The defense would at times become so locked in on Harden coming off these screens that the help defense might forget about their man entirely, where James Harden could just find a teammate cutting right past everyone to the rim. This passing showed in the stats as he averaged a double-double with over 11 assists, which led the NBA and was the highest of his entire career. But in the 2017 season, the Rockets trade for Chris Paul. So now with CP3, James Harden was removed from the point guard role and was back to playing shooting guard. But Harden had become so accustomed to having the ball in his hands, and now with CP3 distributing the ball, Harden resorted to iso ball, and he was unbelievably good at this. Having a 35% ISO frequency, he was ISOing a lot and scoring a lot, using one crossover and then another crossover to attack his man off the dribble, then slow down, using three, four, five crossovers on this possession to get to the paint for a floater, slowly sizing up his man off the dribble, then using a step back to create space for the jump shot. These step backs were a signature part to his ISO game, as he could size up his man and the moment he relaxed, just step back to shoot the three. And even when he would get cut off, it was a method for him to decelerate and then create space with the step back to get his shot off. He was great at attacking off the dribble, using multiple slow crossovers to lull you to sleep, just to quickly explode by you to get right to the rim. This was very common to see, as he liked to size up his man before deciding to attack downhill. He was so good at isolation scoring, that if you looked at every half-court play in the last 15 seasons that had a minimum of 300 possessions, a James Harden ISO in his MVP season was the second most efficient play of all of them. 
So after winning MVP in 2018, he only doubled down on his ISO scoring. The year following his MVP season, his usage rate peaked at 40%, which was also the second highest usage rate in NBA history. His ISO frequency also rose to almost 50% in the following season, and the year after that, it was at 45%. The percentage of his shots attempted that were unassisted on rose as well, is now both the percentage of his threes that were unassisted on and his overall shot attempts were over 80%. He was creating for himself at an all-time high rate and didn't lose that much efficiency from it either, having a points per possession of over 1.1 on these shots. This was mainly due to his threes or layup method as he was basically either getting to the rim or shooting a three. This led to him shooting a career high attempts inside the restricted area and a career high in threes, taking over 1,000 attempts the year after his MVP season. Spending more time than ever sizing up his man with six crossovers before attacking downhill to get to the rim. Even sizing up his man, then attacking downhill, and once he got cut off, resizing up his man again and then pulling back to shoot the three. His strength made him difficult to stop from getting downhill as he could use his body to absorb contact and then draw the and one at the rim. And he had the quickness to pair with this, which made him unstoppable attacking downhill. Yet if the defense put their hands down for even just a second to guard the drive, he had the shooting ability to just pull up for three and make it. Even when the defender kept his hand up the whole time, all it took was the defender to back his foot up just slightly, and Harden had created enough space to get his shot off. Teams were trying all sorts of crazy methods to try and stop him from scoring, but after multiple seasons with no championships, the Rockets fell apart and Harden demanded a trade from Houston, and since leaving, he has gone back to more of a distributor role again, operating as the point guard, dishing out over 10 assists per game in each of the last three seasons coming off of screens and using his unbelievable playmaking to whip a one-handed pass around the defense to his teammate rolling to the rim for a layup. While he isn't going ISO nearly as much, he's kept many of these same tendencies, spending a lot of time operating around the perimeter through ball screens and ISOs, using his pace and skill to create for himself off the dribble as he can attack the defender's top foot to get him to turn his hips, then stop on a dime and shuffle his feet to step back beyond the arc for an open jumper. Knowing the proper angles so that when the defender turns to recover, he's already stepping back creating space for the jumper. It's this elite creation off the dribble that led to him having a historic MVP season, becoming the most efficient ISO scorer of all time, his elite pace, body control, and quick moves made him unguardable in isolation. He was so good that it makes you wonder how good those OKC teams could have been had he never been traded to Houston. Kevin Durant was already proving to be one of the top scorers in the league at the time, so if you would like to see how Kevin Durant developed his game to become one of the greatest scorers ever, click on this video right here.